Hello, Loungefly fans. Um, my name is Erin, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the castle bags that I own, which really isn't very many, to be perfectly honest. But anywho, if that is something that interests you, please stick around. Okay. I think, I think I'm going to start with, um, my Loungefly um, Cinderella Castle Bag. This is the new one that was supposed to be part of a, I believe, um, like a 12 part series. So it was supposed to be one a month. Um, but if I recall correctly, <laughs> uh, the world shut down and then so did production on certain things. So unfortunately, um, a lot of this was delayed. So anyway, but this was the first in that series. Um, and I remember it came out right after Christmas time and I missed it because <laughs> we were recovering after the holidays. And I am not one of those people like there are many women out there who don't spoil themselves throughout the year. I am not one of those women. This is a new problem. And I think it came with Miss Rona. <laughs> so, anywho, there is the little emblem. Doesn't seem to be focusing on it. Here we go. Anyway, I actually really enjoy these bags. I know they're not particularly hard to come by, but um, I really like the applique. Um, I really like the um, embossing and the back is um, embroidered, which I think is just a really nice detail. Um, there are a lot of problems with this series, even though like, I think the bags are pretty, there are a few that I will not be adding to my collection. Like if they're not here, I'm not adding them, but, um, here's the interior. Oh, there is the interior of the bag, but, um, some of the problems are that it, the, the artwork on the bags just aren't consistent. So um, some of the bags have this kind of, um, I don't know, alternative animation, but not all of the bags. Um, anyway, I had not originally planned on collecting wallets. I told myself bags were enough of a problem, but I ended up getting... <laughs> the wallet to go with it. As you can see, I have not even used it yet. The reason I hadn't really focused on getting any of the wallets is just because changing your wallet is far more difficult than changing your purse. And I had a strategy. I was using card holders for a little bit and would just slide the card holder inside the wallet. And then I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like. I am literally just using this to have a pretty wrapping on top of a plain card holder. I just felt absurd, but whatever. Anyway, it's a pretty wallet. Moving on. Um, I believe this one came, if not next in the series, it was after Cinderella. I think actually Snow White came next and I'm just, like the Snow White bag is pretty. I'm not, I don't know, not not a fan. I mean, it's pretty. I just haven't picked, I just haven't purchased it because other bags have taken priority. Here's the back. I'm sure you guys have seen this one a million times. Um, one of the things that bothered me, which is what took so long for me to decide whether or not I was going to pick up this bag was the fact that the castle did not come off the top like the Cinderella bag. It bothers me still, but that's okay. 
I'm gonna make myself move on from it. But I think that, and I understand that there are two castles, so I get that, that it was probably far more difficult, but I think they still could have done King Trident's castle down here and then done Eric's castle still like protruding off the top of the bag. Anyway. Hashtag real world problems. And again, I did end up getting the wallet. This one I do use. I think I still hear money in it. <laughs> and then the interior of the bag. I do really like that it is suede on top or it feels, and it's not suede, but you know what I mean? Like it has that like really soft suede material. I probably wouldn't use it in the rain, but. Anyway, that is my aerial bag. And then, um, I don't know which one came next. Well, it's okay, I'll just grab this one because <laughs> it's closest to me. Here is my um, Beauty and the Beast bag. I have not even used this bag yet. And it's, not that I don't like it, that's not why I haven't used it. All Beauty and the Beast, like all the bell bags are probably my favorite bags. And pretty much all the bell bags will probably never leave my collection. Um, only because I just relate the most to her. Not that she's necessarily my favorite princess, but I do relate the most to her. But um, I know people are really annoyed about, I think, the quality of the color of the back of the bag and the front of the bag. And I swear people can explain it to me all day long. I still don't see what they're seeing. Like I still, it looks even to me. I don't know, but anyway, I really like the black logo tag. Um, but this bag does just feel very fall. And I um, don't remember when I actually received it, but it was not fall. <laughs> So probably late winter, early spring. Here's the wallet. And then the inside. And the inside of this bag, there is a slip pocket. Mm. and like stained glass features which is really cute here is um tiana's palace this is probably my favorite my favorite one in this new series of um castle bags I just think it's so pretty. And I see these little um, like bottle lights and I just think they'd be so cute in like hanging from our backyard tree or I don't know, something, but so cute. I love this bag. These are embroidered, which is really nice. And then there's the back. Oh, so cute. And then um, I saw this at box lunch and had to have it. It is, let's see if I can get it. Tiana's dress. It is really heavy though <laughs> and metal. So I have to be really careful when I'm getting out of my car or anybody else's car that I don't ding somebody's car. And yeah, I have the wallet. There it is. <sighs> Surprise.
surprisingly have not used this wallet. I actually love this bag a bunch. So um, I am surprised I haven't used the wallet. I don't even think I realized I had it. I'm telling you, the wallets are just harder. It's just harder for me to be aware and make sure I change them out. And also I'm usually running late for work. So there's that. Mm, it's just not gonna fit. I think I overstuffed this bag. I do, I think I've mentioned before that I do really keep my bags stuffed when I'm not using them so that it doesn't change the integrity of the shape of the bag. So, and I do that for all my bags and I've always done that. Um, okay. <clears throat> I think I'm going to show this one is my Hogwarts bag and I do love this bag. Again, it's just another really good fall bag. I love the back and I love the hardware on this one. The hardware is like a rustic zipper pull, which is just like a really nice touch, but I love the color of this bag. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna be honest and share some silly <laughs> thoughts I had. When I, I for the longest time thought this was the V-neck of a sweater. I was like, I remember purchasing it, seeing it, looking at it, still thinking that, and was like, why did they put the V-neck of a cardigan on the bottom of the castle bag. Didn't make sense to me, whatever. And then someone else was talking about it and called it rocks. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> anyway, and I love anything with Hedwig, so. Fun fact, um, anytime they come out with like some good Harry Potter merchandise, I'm all about it. Harry Potter was the first book series I was ever really interested in. I was one of those struggling readers as a kid. Um, I really struggled with reading. It's probably the reason I love teaching reading so much and I'm so passionate about reading um, is because I had such a hard time with reading. And um, now looking back, I see why I struggled so much with it, but that could be a like that could be an educational video in itself. But um, the Harry Potter series was the first book series I sat down and I read cover to cover, and I remember still like I was still a developing reader, and I would still struggle and would have to go back and reread some chapters. But I loved the book so much that I felt like it was really important for me to persevere and to be able to get through those chapters. So, um, thank you, Harry Potter, <laughs> JK Rowling, for releasing something that ignited my interest and fire in reading. Love it. This is a recent purchase, so I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I do really love it. It is not Loungefly, but it is Danielle Nicole, trying to make sure that light is right. Um, as you can see, I still have the wrapping on it, but here is the pack. She says Danielle Nicole. She's uh, usually, there's a little snap closure. It says Cinderella on it. And she usually just has a really basic, yeah, interior lining. It is a crossbody. Um, the crossbody is not removable. And then, there's a, um, here. Uh, there is a zipper closure, and then there is also a slip pocket. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> and her interior lining usually just says DN. I don't collect much Danielle Nicole. This is only, I think, my second bag. Not because I don't love Danielle Nicole. I really like her things. Um, I know there's some controversy with some of the designs. That kind of, I don't know. Um, that part kind of frustrates me. 
Oh, and there's a clock um, right here. The moon is like a clock, which I think is a really cool detail. But also just because I don't need another thing to start collecting. I obviously collect a lot of books. I collect a lot of lounge fly and I have a, um, a few Dooney and Burks. And I think if I started another collection, like my husband might really freak out. So, um, he has banned the term collection. Um, next, I did get the Lounge Fly 50th wallet. I did not get the bag because the bag looks so similar to the um, original like Cinderella castle bag which I stinking love and have. So I did get the wallet to go with my Cinderella bag. Um, and like I said before, I do use all of my bags. And so I use this bag. So excuse that it is <laughs> dirty and heavily used. Actually, this one's not bad. This one's fine. Here are the sides. Here's the back. It's just nice and simple. I, um, got so lucky with this bag and I didn't even realize I was lucky at the time. I ordered this on Shop Disney and what had happened was I was desperately trying to find the Sleeping Beauty castle when my husband and I went to Disneyland. I even was following this girl around. I was like, where did you get your bag? He was super embarrassed because he's like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like you can't just go up and start talking to random people um, coming out of the bathroom. And I was like, well, I was kind of desperate to get it. Anyway, so then I was stalking Shop Disney, couldn't find the Sleeping Beauty one, like it was never released. Secondary Market had it for, I don't know, at that time it was like two, $300. And then I saw this one pop up and I was kind of like, well, I'll settle. And I do really love blue. Blue is probably my favorite color. So I was like, I'll go ahead and get this one. So I got this one and then I was watching one on Poshmark. <laughs> oh, just in case you guys do want to see the inside. I really like the inside of these bags. I think they turned out really cute. Um, anyway. I saw one pop, no, it wasn't, uh, it was not Poshmark, sorry. It was Mercari. And I was watching it like a hawk. Rem uh, just remember that this was closer, like this was way back closer to when this had released. So this bag, I believe, released in 2019. It was definitely pre-Rona. Uh, thank you. Um, I believe she released in 2019 and I was watching it. It was pretty high. I think for me, it was high. It was $120 on Mercari. And I remember thinking I'm not spending $120 on a lounge fly bag. That's it's vegan leather. It's just a lounge fly. I'm not doing it. So I was watching it and she, after Christmas, I'm guessing because it hadn't sold, she ended up selling it for $75. Um, it came with a tag, but the straps were not, um, you know, wrapped up like they usually are with that little wrap. So, but I did not care. I was like, I got this for such a good deal. Actually, I kept telling myself 75 was way too much to spend on a used bag. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm glad I spent $75 on it. So she's stunning. I love it. Um, again, here are the sides. This one is dirty. I use her pretty frequently. So do mind the little smudgies. Um, like this bag. This is one that is never leaving my collection. Like just, it's not. So, um, I don't care how dirty it gets. <laughs> and then here's the interior. Um, I keep her really well stuffed just because I use it so much. I don't want it to completely lose its shape. There you go. Um,
I did just want to show the little zipper. It's a um, keychain that I also got on Mercari just from, here we go, somebody who frequents the park. They happen to just have this lying around in their collection and we're getting rid of it. And I just thought it would be really cute on my bag. And oops, I still think it's very cute. Oops, backwards. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I have a pretty substantial collection. So that's kind of why I think I'm just going to break it up into sections like this. Like do castles, maybe do all my book bags, maybe do all of my sequins bags and etc. But if you have any suggestions on what you might like to see or um, if there is a bag you're hunting for, you should leave that in the comments. Um, or if we're bag twins or whatever. Um, or if you have this, this bag or Cinderella, wherever she went. Okay, here, if you have either of these bags, I'm curious, do you use them? Tell me in the comments. I know a lot of people do not use these bags. A lot of people just don't use their bags. I use them as my daily wear. They are not just park bags for me. For one, I only get to go to the park maybe once a year and um, the bags are just way too pretty to not, not use. Plus I'm a kindergarten teacher, so I can get away with it. My kids love it and I just use them as an excuse. All right, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.